what is information management? How about digital transformation? How can AEC firms successfully merge these two together to be innovative and successful going forward? Well, in this episode of the Civil Engineering Podcast, Brett Tusshaus, Product Director at Dell Tech, is going to talk about just that. And he's also going to talk about how a career change really set him up for success. Let's do it. All right, now I'd like to welcome our guest on to today's episode, Brett Tusshaus. Brett is the VP of Product Management at Dell Tech. Brett, welcome to the Civil Engineering Podcast. Anthony, thank you so much for having me. My pleasure to be here today. Yeah, no, we're excited to have you. I know Dell Tech is, you know, has accomplished quite a bit in the AE industry and they've provided a lot of solutions. We, we meet with them a lot at conferences and I'm excited to have you here to talk a little bit about some of those solutions. And so, Brett, let's get started with your career. Tell us a little bit about your background and, you know, how you ended up eventually getting to Dell Tech. Sure, absolutely. So I've, I've been with Dell Tech for about 10 years, but Prior to coming to Dell Tech, I was actually a, a Dell Tech customer for about 15 years. My, my background and my education's in architecture, received my, my master's of architecture at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, um, graduated from there and, and went to work for an architecture firm here in the Milwaukee area, um, name, a firm by the name of Epstein U and Architects, and um, worked there for 15 years. And I started out practicing architecture and Eventually, I, I you know, got into a lot of the technology side of things, starting with mostly CAD um, and 3D animations and things like that. And it was a growing firm, and, and they needed help sort of on the, the broader IT side. And I was given an opportunity to take over as IT manager and shifted to that role and, and worked as a, a basically a CIO for about seven or eight years before leaving there and, and coming to Dell Tech. Um, like I said, I was a Dell Tech customer while working at that firm. And struck up some great relationships with people at Dell Tech, got very interested in the technology and the solutions that Dell Tech provided, and, and the opportunity arose for me to, to join the product management ranks at Dell Tech, and, and that's what brought me here. That's great, and let's go back for a minute to that first decision there that you made in terms of going into the IT side of things. What, what was that like? I mean, obviously, you were into the architecture side of it. You had your degree there, and it sounded like the opportunity came up, and what, what made you interested in that? Yeah, so in college and you know, even my early days as a practicing architect, I was heavily involved in technology. Um, you know, in, in school, using CAD at a time when CAD wasn't quite as mainstream. Um, uh, you know, even my thesis presentation used PowerPoint, which was one of the, if you can believe it, was one of the first thesis presentations that used PowerPoint. So I was heavily into technology coming out of school. And the firm that I joined at the time was about 40 people. And um, experienced a significant amount of growth and, and architecture firms at, at, at that time didn't really have sort of dedicated IT people and things like that. And I was given the opportunity because of the growth of the firm and, and where things were going and sort of my background with sort of a, a techno technology slant to it um, to help lead the firm and its growth on the IT side of the business. Um, and, and knowing the architecture world, having done the architecture and, and that sort of thing, um, it really was a, a unique opportunity for me and, and, and no regrets, certainly looking back at that decision. Yeah, no, that's great. All right. So, you know, moving into Dell Tech, I mean, Dell Tech is a company, I think a lot of AE professionals are aware of Dell Tech, certainly heard of them and maybe use some of their, their products for sure. How would you, um, for those not familiar with Dell Tech, how would you describe the company? Well, Dell Tech is focused on providing solutions for project-focused businesses. And when you look at architects, engineers, um, and even contractors to a certain extent, their whole business is focused on projects. So Dell Tech is bringing solutions um, to those, those types of companies to help them execute, manage, um, and deliver their projects. And, you know, if you think about the architecture, engineering, and construction world, um, you know, there's, there's, I'd like to think of it as sort of a three-legged stool. You've got um, the sort of back office accounting and finance component that is where project management lives and sort of the whole financial side of the company. You've got your, your um, uh, production uh, portion of the organization, which is where, you know, drawings are made, documents are made and that type of thing. And then you've got sort of the, the project execution component. And while Dell Tech doesn't uh, work in sort of the, the the CAD and that side of the world or the BIM side of the world, those other two legs of the stool, you know, we work in very much. So project management, project execution, project delivery, um, the solutions that Dell Tech bring to the table are aimed at those two legs of the stool very squarely. 
Yeah, that's great. And, and digging a little bit deeper on that in terms of, you know, understanding the kind of the challenges of these AE firms. I mean, certainly at EMI, you know, we do try to understand that in terms of the training programs that we develop, really understanding the challenges, the needs. I know that Dell Tech, you know, spends a lot of time on that as well in terms of really trying to understand the challenges of these firms so you could build the right products and services. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, that side of the Dell Tech business in terms of, you know, the customer's needs? Yeah, absolutely. I think they've certainly evolved since my time at Dell Tech. You know, as I, as I look at sort of that evolution, I, I, like I said, I've been here 10 years now, so I've seen the needs of the organizations change um, that we serve specifically in the architecture and engineering world. And, you know, most recently, um, I think the areas that, that were most keen to sort of understand and help organizations with are one in project management areas. Um, and that's not to say that Dell Tech Solutions haven't been focused on, on project management um, in the past, but we've seen sort of a, um, uh, a renewed interest and emphasis around best practices and project management techniques. So we've been looking at, at ways to evolve and refine and expand our solutions to support that sort of re-emphasis on the project management discipline and best practices. So that is, that is one key area that we're focused on. I think another thing that we've seen, especially in the past maybe five to six years, and, and this is common, I think, in, in business in general, but certainly not um, out of the ordinary in the AE world, is that next generation workforce um, you know the tools that that we were providing architecture and engineering firms 10 years ago are very different than the tools we're providing today and a lot of that's driven by this next generation workforce um, you have a, a different group of people that are expecting different things out of the technology that they use to get their jobs done and um, you know for better or worse it's different than the traditional workforce that is sort of retiring from that aec space today um, and that means, you know, more accessible technology. That means smarter technology. That means technology accessible that, uh, everywhere I go on every device I use. So that's been something that we've had to respond to as a solutions provider um, for this industry as well in regards to sort of where we're going with our products and solutions. Yeah, that's great. And, and I think that honestly, that's a real, in terms of companies like Dell Tech, I mean, that's a real important need right now in the industry. You know, there definitely are like these generational gaps in terms of like what, you know, the experienced professionals maybe feel is needed or that they're used to needing versus what the people that they're hiring today are needing. And I feel like certainly, you know, companies like Dell Tech can help to bridge that gap in a way in terms of, because it's not always that the experience, the firm leaders are going to be able to understand what those needs are and be able to provide them. They need to get people involved like yourself that can help with that. So, you know, it's good to hear that Dell Tech is really out there, you know, doing the homework to figure that out, which I think is important in terms of moving things forward. So obviously we're in an interesting time right now in terms of this pandemic and everybody working differently, let's say, whether it's remotely, some people remotely, some not a lot more than usual. People are starting to get back, but I think they'll remain, you know, a number of um, remote workers for the time being. So let's talk a little bit about that in terms of workflow. Let's talk a little bit first about information man management. What is information management? How would you, how would you define that? Well, it's, it, it, obviously, it's an incredibly broad term. Um, you know, nearly everything a, a business does really every day could be considered information management. Um, and no doubt that uh, an organization's ability to, to manage information is probably um, contributes to their core competency and their strategy and things like that. But if you if you look at the concept of information management more through the architecture, engineering, construction industry lens, um, you know, it's a little less broadly focused and we at Dell Tech in terms of looking at information management, it's, it's really all about sort of collecting, managing and sharing all of the necessary assets, if you will, to execute on a project. Now, that's not to say that corporate information management is, is still not extremely important. It definitely is and enables the business. But when you look at information management in our industry or this industry specifically, you know, the number of documents, the um, drawings, the reports, the specifications, the project manuals, you know, even emails in and of themselves um, continues to grow and grow and grow and, and giving the, the, the organization the ability to get their arms around that to help execute their projects in a successful, profitable way that delights their clients. That's what really what, what information management is all about when you look at 
um, you know, the project information management discipline itself that, that we like to talk about here at Dell Tech. Right. And, and digital transformation, which is something that is really been happening and it seems to be happening faster and faster where people are using, you know, faster digital technology to solve their problems, to work on projects. It's like constantly evolving almost by the second, mm -hmm. you know, something that we're all thinking about, you know, how are AEC firms or how can they, you know, take information management and then this, this digital transformation that we're going through and kind of, you know, bring the two together. Cause it seems like, as you said, the managing information is critical. And I think especially in firms, AE firms, where there's all kinds of projects and files, et cetera, but the technology is moving faster and faster as well. So how do we kind of marry these together? Well, I think, you know, if you look at, at the context, and, and I think this is amplified now, even sort of where we are today with what everybody's calling the new normal or the new reality, um, I think this is even amplified more, the, the value of something like this. You know, one of the things that we like to talk about when we um, represent the value proposition of information management and how important it is to an AE firm, um, interesting statistic out there, 20, employees spend 20% of their time looking for things, looking for information. And if you think about that, obviously, if you think about that just in the context of wasted time, it's a little bit staggering. But the other piece of that that's important to understand is chances are if, if, if people are spending 20% of their time looking for stuff, it's probably a, a good chance that there's times when they're not finding what they need. Um, and that can obviously have a direct impact on their ability to be successful in a, on a project. So if you think about information management and digital transformation in that context, you know, there's a, there's, I think there's a few questions that organizations in the AE world, um, you know, need to ask themselves. Do they have a, uh, a technology-based solution in place for, for managing their documents? And that is, you know, a system that um, through various technologies, whether it be indexing or machine learning or metadata um, or even, you know, optical character, rec character recognition can curate and, and serve up information to project teams. Um, and that system has a, a very robust uh, search mechanism at its foundation. You know, that's an important question for an organization to ask themselves as they're going through sort of this digital transformation um, in the context of information management. And if the answer is no. I, I think that's, that's uh, an indicator that an organization should sort of take a more close look at that. And I think the second question that, that I would throw in there is how does that extend to communication and email? Um, I think oftentimes, and even sort of where I came from, I saw this email was looked at and the communication around projects was sort of looked at as secondary um, to the drawings, the contract documents, the specifications and things like that. And, you know, we memorialize the contract documents um, as a part of the process of delivering a project and, and look at sometimes that email and communication component as secondary or supplemental. And um, oftentimes the difference between a um, say an incident free delivery of a project and a, a, a costly errors and omissions lawsuit is something in one email that is an acknowledgement or agreement that was made during the project that could, you know, help that particular situation. So again, another question for organizations to ask, do I have a system that um, helps me track and manage all the communications around a project? And then the, the, the third question I would say is, revolves around, you know, do you have a purpose-built system for helping your teams administer and, and manage the contract primarily do, during construction? You know, nowadays, um, a lot of stuff happens on site and with the devices that are out there and the capabilities to leverage technology within a construction site during the construction phase, you know, the process of managing RFIs and change orders and punch lists and all those things, um, having something purpose-built to do that rather than Excel spreadsheets and Word documents and, and whatever else companies might be using, um, I think it's critical. So it, you know, all of these questions are, do you have, if, if, an, if an AEC firm answers no to any of those, I think it's, it's a point to look in the mirror and say, okay, this digital transformation capabilities are out there. How can I, how can I bring that together and, and switch some of these no's to yeses? Yeah, that's a great framework of questions that I think firms can walk through. And I, and I know that, you know, we have listeners in, in varying firm sizes, of course. I'm sure there's those of you that work for firms that are, you know, 10,000 plus, and there's those of you that have 20 people. So, you know, you're going to be at different stages of this, obviously, and, you know, you'll answer the questions that Brett posed in different ways, of course, which will help you with different solutions. But I think, Brett, you know, one of the questions that I have for you is I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of kind of like an AE firm owner, you know, thinking about investing in technology in general, 
And one of the, the reservations that I would have is, is I mean, I, I think we would know that it's a need, obviously, in the way the world is going, but, you know, everything evolves so quickly, right? And any kind of investment you make is a huge investment, not just in terms of the dollars of purchasing a product, but really the, the hours spent on the training and everything that goes into it, which I'm sure you know well. So what would you say to a leader? You know, how do they make a decision around the right product that maybe is adaptable or, you know, how do you address that when, when someone has that concern? So I think, you know, one of the big things, and I, I think it, it sort of relates or is aligned definitely with what you said, um, you know, any technology implementation, uh, the, the, I think the, the cliche adage is, is you know, it's 80% tech or 20% technology and 80% people. Um, and I think that's an important thing for any, for any organization to understand when they're going through the process that you just described. Um, you know, there's a lot of great technology products out there. Um, and most of those products can, can serve the, the sort of the fundamental needs that are being pursued as a result of a company, you know, looking at those products. But the important thing to understand is that other 80%, the people, the processes, the change management component that needs to happen internally needs to be factored in as well. And when you, you know, your question is how do, what, what guidance do you give organizations that are, you know, on the cusp of making those decisions or, or looking at that pursuit, it's, it's involving the right people within your organization and understanding that it's not just a technology project. This isn't something that you say, you know, you go to your IT manager or your IT director and say, you know, go find us a, a piece of software that's going to do project manager, project management for us. Um, I think that's an incredibly short-sighted and, and setting yourself up for fail. And instead, you need to say to your project managers, listen, we know there's tools out there that can make us better at what we're doing in the context of project management. You guys are the experts in our organization. You're the ones out there on the front lines managing projects. Help us pick the solution. Help us implement the solution. Help us um, train everybody in the organization to use the solution. Um, and I think taking that approach um, you know, helps you focus on the 80% and the technology almost becomes secondary to that process. Mm, that's interesting. So it sounds really like when you invest in a technology, as much as you're hoping that this product, which I'm sure is going to be robust and have a lot of features, as much as you're hoping and you see all those benefits, in order to realize those benefits, it's really going to take people in your firm to get on board, to get trained, and to, you know, I guess, create some new habits around utilizing the software effectively in order for that investment to really make sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the things that I like to tell um, customers when we're talking about change management is this concept that I've used over and over for years. It's, it's sort of middle out. Um, you know, you hear a lot of times when you talk about um, technology implementations and things like that is this, the importance of top-down support, which don't get me wrong, top-down support is important. You need to have support at the top to, to make any of these things successful. But I would I would posit that middle out support is is equally if not more important because if you've got you know the people that are out there doing their jobs day to day using these tools embracing them and celebrating them that impact on everybody around them is going to be far more profound um, than the top down management support it's that middle out support that i think is absolutely huge in situations like that hmm. it's interesting so Brett, you, you know, from your seat, you get to see, I think, a lot of things probably from, you know, what I like to call like the 30,000 foot view in terms of talking to companies and seeing, you know, projects overall and seeing how some of these technologies have impacts on, on firms. What are your thoughts on how innovation and technology are going to impact the built environment and kind of shape these projects that these AEC firms are working on now over the next 10 years? Yeah, so this is another, I think, a, a pretty broad question. You know, if you look at innovation in the built environment, you can look at through a, lot, through a lot of different lenses. You know, you've got things going on just in, in construction and building materials and building technology that are going to, you know, change what buildings look like, how we experience them, how they're built, um, how much they cost, all of those things. So, you know, there's, there's, there's stuff out there on, you know, self-repairing concrete. There's stuff out there on transparent aluminum material. So all of those things are, are definitely going to affect, um, you know, like I said, how buildings are built and, and what they look like. And then you look at some of the technologies that um, the AE industry is looking at, whether it be drones or laser scanners for surveying or wearables and portables, or even the, the concept of augmented reality to help with the design phase and help a client understand what it is we're, we're designing for them and building for them. All those things, I think, um, 
are, are, are key to where the industry is going and, and how innovation is going to change things. But, you know, as I, as I think about it more in the context of the solutions that we bring firms and this concept of information management and, and digital transformation and how the, the typical AE firm is going to operate and how we're going to see that evolve as a result of innovations in the, the next decade or so. Um, you know, the first thing I'd point out, and this is going to seem maybe a little cliche, um, but, you know, BIM is still front and center. It's the first thing that, that comes to mind when I think about this. And, you know, I think back to my time, even before coming to Dell Tech, um, at least in the, the area where the firm I worked at for uh, introducing Revit into the office, we were one of the first um, uh, firms in the area um, to introduce Revit, and that was, you know, 15 years ago. And, and we're still talking about BIM in a way as we're right on the cusp of it sort of showing value. So I still think that's a, a huge innovation that we're going to see really take hold more and more as the decade goes on. And I also think, you know, we're going to see um, it, it may be used in slightly different ways than we're seeing today. And, and this whole concept of a digital twin for, for buildings that are built, um, I think we're poised on making that a reality and the benefit that that will bring to not only our industry in terms of the services we can provide our, our customers, but also, um, uh, you know, how a building is owned and operated after construction is complete. So I, I think BIM is, you know, like I said, maybe a little cliche, maybe a little bit um, overused, but I still think that's a key um, innovation item in the, in the decade ahead. And I think the other one that I would add to that, which is, I think, directly related in, in a lot of ways, but it's data. And again, maybe a little cliche to, to cite big data when we're talking about innovation, but um, I, I think this is something that's going to really start to help the typical AE firm. You know, as the technologies become more mainstream um, and commoditized, you know, we're going to see A firms leverage, um, whether it be big data or uh, machine learning, things like that, in terms of how they design buildings, how they um, manage the economics of a building project, how they identify potential risks and manage those risks, even, even to the point in, in terms of how they select products for the buildings um, that they're designing. I think, you know, like I said, data, we've, we've got so much data and it's time that we start using that and, and making it do some work for us. Yeah, it's all, it's interesting. And, you know, certainly when you think of technology, certainly the word innovation comes to mind, but one of the other words that comes to mind to me is overwhelming sometimes. I mean, there's, I mean, just based on what you just said, you mentioned so many different roads we could go down in terms of, you know, another 10 different podcast episodes here on all these different topics and items. And so I think just, this is just my own recommendation on, on talking to a lot of firm leaders of different sizes. I think one thing that you just need to do in your firm is, you know, kind of keep a heartbeat on these things, whether it's you put together a technology committee or something like that, where you have people reviewing things that are going on in the industry on a regular basis, just because I know for these small to mid-sized firms, sometimes you may not have committees like that, you may not be looking at things and, it, and part of it could be like it's overwhelming. And so I think kind of to Brett's point, we know it's going to be critical moving forward. And it doesn't mean you need to take every single technology and start using it right away. But I think having, you know, keeping an eye on it can be helpful. I would also think, Brett, now maybe you could speak this a little bit, but just, just from my own interactions with people, you know, the, the, the sooner a company embraces some of these technologies and gets their professionals used to using some of them, even if they're small, and they're using some small products or services, it's only going to make it easier to grow because at some point you're going to need to utilize more technology. And from our conversation earlier, it sounds like the people and their ability to embrace it is critical. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, I think you hit on it, it, it very um, accurately before when you said, you know, even if it's starting small, and, and sort of moving up from there, that's important. I think one of the, 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 the things that we try to tell customers when we get the digital transformation um, question is start small and scale up. Um, you know, you don't have to make this huge investment in this brand new solution. There's little things that you can do in your organization um, that will help you start down that digital transformation path. One of the things that that we often talk to our customers about is you've got these great systems in place. Are you really leveraging to their leveraging them to their fullest extent? There might be a component that you're using in a suboptimized way. There might be a component that you haven't even started using yet. And we encourage customers to look at those pieces and say, how can you, how can you um, leverage that piece that you've already invested in to help your organization? Maybe be more paperless, maybe be more connected, maybe be better in terms of how you manage your teams and your projects and things like that. So that start small and, 
and scale up, I think is important. And I think, you know, you, your, your point about, uh, you know, keeping an eye on what's going on out there, um, you know, that's huge too, because some uh, innovations, some evolutions of technology aren't going to apply to certain organizations. Um, and some are going to apply to other types of organizations. So keeping an eye on what's going on out there um, to figure out, you know, which ones you should pursue and which ones you perhaps leave alone for, for the time being is important as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And I would assume that a company like Deltec, that's something that you can assist companies with, right? If they're not quite sure where to, where to dip their feet in. Absolutely. You know, we, we, we have what we call optimization workshops with our customers um, on a regular basis to, to attack that specific thing. You know, let's figure out where we can optimize what you're doing, where we can leverage what you've invested in more than you are today. Um, so that's definitely something that we bring to the table when we work with our customers. Yeah. And that's something that in doing a lot of coaching and training in firms, you know, sometimes we get into just like personal productivity. So not so much with technology, but you know, how they set up their day, things they're focusing on. And oftentimes what comes up in conversations is, is the technology. And a lot of times what I hear people say is, you know, we've got this elaborate system, but either number one, we don't know how to use it correctly or in totality, or number two, we feel like there's other avenues of it that they keep telling us we're going to use, but we haven't got to use it yet. So I definitely think that, you know, Brett hit something there on that last point and that sometimes the best place to start is take a look at what you've currently invested in and make sure that you're using every aspect of it and, you know, talk to your staff. And, and, you know, if you're working with a company like Dell tech, I'm sure they can help you do this, but talk to your staff and understand we've got this great software. Um, you have some challenges can we help you with the challenges with the software we have? Because we may be able to, but we may not even know that we can, or you may not even know that we have these capabilities. So there's lots of, lots of roads to, to dive down here. Um, but it certainly seems like, you know, we know technology is the way of the future. It's just to manage, uh, just kind of being able to understand which is the best for you in your company at this time, for your staff and kind of growing from there. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with Brett and we're going to put him on the civil engineering hot seat and wrap this one up. I hope you are enjoying this episode of the civil engineering podcast, which is produced by the engineering management Institute. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here for more podcast episodes and for all of our engineering manager, 80, 20 shorts videos that we publish weekly where we interview successful engineering managers. Now it's time to jump into our civil engineering hot seat segment. All right, we are back with Brett Tusshaus, VP of Product Management at Dell Tech, and it's time to put Brett on the civil engineering hot seat. Brett, you ready for this? I'm ready. All right, let's rock and roll. So, Brett, are there any specific routines or rituals that you practice on a daily basis? For example, maybe it's a morning routine or a lunchtime routine or something you do on a daily basis that helps contribute to your success and productivity. So I, I would say probably the most routine or habitual thing that I do relates to, um, I, I guess let's call it let's call it email management. You know, I uh, as you can imagine, like everybody else, I get a, a ton of emails every day, um, and because we're a global company, I get a lot overnight as well. Um, so one of the first things I do in the morning um, is I exercise and, and, and go for a run. That's key, I think. But I'll sit down and, and before I sort of start my day, I have time blocked out or I'll go through my email um, and uh, look at the things that I need to prioritize in the next you know, eight hours or so, whatever that day looks like. Um, and it may sound like a simple thing, but it, it really helps me sort of manage my, in my head what my day is going to be like and make sure that I've prioritized the things that are um, most important, that need my attention, that somebody might be waiting for. Um, and like I said, it, it sets up, it sort of sets the foundation for the day and makes me feel better about everything else that I'm going to have going on for that day um, before I get into the meetings, before I get into sort of the everything else that's going to happen in the day. Yeah, that's great. No, that's something that we talk about here a lot when we do our productivity training is really identifying those most important tasks for the day. And it sounds like, you know, that's something that you kind of jump on um, early in the morning, which is, of course, I mean, I think at least the best time to do that. All right. So next question, is there a book that you might recommend, or if you think about, you know, your career to date, you know, personal, professional development, whatever it may be, a book that jumped out that's been helpful for you or that, you know, gave you some tips or strategies that you kind of use to this day? So I'm going to answer with two. I hope that's okay. But yeah. I, I, the, there's two that come to mind when you ask a question like that. It's drive and switch. Um, 
both great books and I actually remember reading them when I made the transition from the architecture firm to Dell Tech and um, I, they, they were great just in sort of um, philosophical thinking in terms of doing things different and looking at things different and what drives you to you know be a good leader and things like that those are the two books that that jump to mind and I often recommend to people um, in the context of you know that type of uh, uh, you know what 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 guides sort of your thinking I guess is probably the best way to describe it Great. All right. Next question. You've had undoubtedly managers or supervisors throughout your career, like we all have, and not asking you to name names here, but if you think of your managers in the past and you think of, oh, I really remember this manager. They're, they're one of my favorite managers. What would be the reason that you identified that person? You know, in other words, like, you know, what makes them such a good manager? What made one or a couple of your managers so good that they kind of stood out to you in your career path? Are there any specific characteristics or skill sets? Absolutely. I think back to, um, you know, I probably probably identify two. And if I think back to my my pre Dell Tech days, um, you know, in the firm I was in, uh, I had a lot of opportunity in front of me. And um, as I, you know, sort of told my story and how I, I got to where I started in, in the world of architecture to where I am today, um, I attribute a lot of that to a, a particular manager that I had, you know, prior to coming to Dell Tech. And um, I think the the characteristic that has always stuck out to me as I think back to those times is just the belief that 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 person had in me. Um, you know, it, it, it instilled confidence in me. It instilled sort of the desire to, to drive ahead and, and try new things and look at new things. So it wasn't, you know, this person didn't teach me a specific skill or, you know, help bolster my knowledge in any way. It was, it was more sort of the how they approached their their belief and confidence in me that that helped me I think the most to to progress forward. That's and great. then the, the the second one I was going to mention after coming to Dell Tech here, you know, a manager that I had here, it was a similar situation, but the auto autonomy that they gave me um, helped me a lot, sort of grow. And it was a very different world than I came from working in an architecture firm, coming to a software company like Dell Tech. Um, and I think that that person's ability to give me that autonomy and, and say, hey, you know, go, go. People are, are thirsty for decisions. People are thirsty for knowledge. Um, help them get to that. And that, that helped me a lot as well. That's great. All right. Last question for you, Brett, that we'd like to ask everybody. Let's say that you were to step into an elevator with an AE professional, you know, and you had 30 to 40 seconds with that person and they asked you, you know, what's kind of the best career advice that you could give me in the next 30, 40 seconds? What do you think based on your career to date and, you know, working a lot in this industry, both as in architecture and as well on the, on the product software side, what would you say to that person? Well, I think the, the first word that comes to mind when I think about that, what that 30 to 40 seconds would be on is thirsty. Um, I think, uh, one, some of the best advice I've, I've gotten in the past is always be thirsty. And I think that applies not just to the AE world, but in general, um, I think that's applied for me here at Dell Tech as well. But you know, given, if you look at everything you and I've talked about today, Anthony, the, the innovations that are coming, the rapidity with tech technology um, is going today, um, not just in sort of the, the tools that, that help, help our run our business, but even around design and construction and things like that. Um, I think, uh, getting stagnant or complacent in terms of where you are with your knowledge and what you're interested in is is um, a recipe for uh, discontent for probably the best way to say it and being thirsty from the start and staying thirsty throughout to learn new things and um, you know explore where things are going I think that was that's probably the like I said the first thing that comes to mind when I think of what advice I would give in that situation that's great awesome all right well once again, Brett Tusshouse, VP of Product Management at Dell Tech, we want to thank you so much for spending some time with us here on the Civil Engineering Podcast. We really appreciate the time, Brett. Great. Thank you very much, Anthony. I appreciate you having me. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Civil Engineering Podcast on YouTube, produced by the Engineering Management Institute. We're always looking for new ways to help engineers become effective managers and leaders. You can view all of our content on our website at engineeringmanagementinstitute.org and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here for our weekly videos. Until next time, please continue to engineer your own success.